Welcome to our talk on the pack of professional practice possibilities. I am Samuel Mann and I have done this work with Phil Osborne, Joe Kirkwood and Glennis Kerr. We all work for Capable New Zealand, the work-based learning school of Otago Polytechnic. We had intended this talk as a discussion face to face and the advantage of doing it face to face is that it was intended as a very tactile discussion. I had a set of cards here for everybody to be looking at as we were talking but as that's not happening we're going to do a mix of talking and hopefully prompt some questions for discussion um, and we shall have some of the images on the screen. You can download the pack of professional practice possibilities from www.op.ac.nz slash possibilities. That's going to be on the next couple of slides. Feel free to contact me at Twitter, Samuel Mann, or work email, samuelman uh, at op.ac.nz. So we have a doctorate of professional practice. It's a third generation professional doctorate. It ends with a professional articulation of the professional framework of practice, the articulation of the, the new me, the defensive argument. It starts with a review of learning, has in the middle a learning agreement in which they articulate their aspirational professional framework of practice and work backwards from that aspirational framework of practice to a current uh, framework of practice and work out the the difference on those that difference being the learning outcomes then what we need is a project to help collect those learning outcomes a work-based project um, usually of some sort of ethnographic action research as an overall method um, to generate those um, learning outcomes and to make the change in the workplace or community or wherever the work is being done. So our approach is very much an integration of two methods, of two um, two research projects, which may or not may not be in fact be one research project. But there is the the change project, the work based project that people are working on, and the articulation of their professional framework of practice, the professional development aspects, if you like. So they have to describe both of those and crucially, those two things have to play nicely together and eventually they'll need to describe both the methodology and the method uh, for both of those. And of course, it's complicated by the fact that it's in both of them are interacting with other people. These are not research projects that people are sitting in a back room doing on their own, they're real and in practice. So we've drawn lots of variations on that diagram with every learner that starts and as a check-in for learners as they're going through, how are they going uh, towards this? And it works as we are talking to people so much that we have literally got hundreds of variations of how to explain but we didn't have a single coherent version and nor did we have a way of demonstrating where the allowed variation is so for example we described this thing as autoethnographic action research meaning at, at, at the top level but we have quite a lot of people saying well actually i i don't do action research i do this this other thing and so what we want, were looking for was a language for describing um, what variability is allowed. We also found that quite often because we didn't have a language of our own that that's, you know, had uh, hundreds of years of development is that we found ourselves saying, saying things like, well, the learning outcome, the learning agreement, well, it's a bit like the, the proposal in a PhD. And so we really wanted to move away from that and say what we are. So to do that, we needed to describe um, in more with more elegance what it is that we actually do. So we looked at the generic diagram and over a few weeks, we highlighted 
all of the areas where there is significant choice in what people are doing not so much on the content but in terms of the structure or as we came to refer to it the the shape of what people are doing so to better understand what was going on in the experiences of learners we asked 24 professional practice graduates masters graduates because at the time we didn't have any doctorate graduates to describe their experience in terms of those areas of choice that we identified uh, before. So for example, the professional practice context, the, the environment in which the work was being doing, done. And 81% described as we expected in work for work, uh, not very much contract work, very little aimed elsewhere. And 13% in transition between jobs. The area of focus, uh, very much a focus on the uh, passion and the passion aligned with opportunity. They also identified uh, one which we hadn't picked before, an area of growing uh, passion. The development of the learning agreement could be seen when two characterized in two different ways that you first develop a project plan um, and then from that, you extract out the, the learning, the aspirational framework of practice. Or we could come at it the other way, where it's very much focused on the uh, framework of practice um, and all of the things uh, in between there. What they actually find that most of them did a uh, project plan and then iterated around on the, the learning. We thought it would be over here a bit more, but uh, that's what they in practice. We asked them relation, the relationship between literature and practice. So where did the research questions come from? Did they come from literature um, and then applied them in practice? Did they come from, from practice and then you look to position that in, in the literature? Do they come from them both uh, together or do they come from the tension between them when you have people saying well well it works in practice or well, it's all very well in theory um, and you can see here that we're strongly practice led in the um, in where the research questions uh, come from we asked about what sorts of projects uh, we were doing and you can see a whole lot of them uh, the biggest area here is um, is strategy, the development of strategy, the development of process, and all of the other things uh, came up in about equal measure. We asked about the relationship between work and project, that my work is separate to my project. What do you want about these two things that uh, aren't together? This one might be, well, my project is about, about work, but it's not connected. So, you know, I, I do my project on Fridays, perhaps. And then increasing degrees of integration through to my work and my project are the same. What do you want about? Um, and you can see that it's these strongly integrated ones that that most um, strongly came through. Uh, we asked about the whether or not it's reductionist or a system view, and it's strongly holistic, strongly a systems view. This one is different to the other one, but it's about the messiness of work. Um, so this one is what's the relationship between the messiness of work practice and my uh, and my research. Uh, so this one might be, well, my work is not messy. So what are you on about? This one is is I, I keep them. I keep them separate. This one is I sort of I, I, I recognize that work is a bit messy and I barrel my way through it. Um, I recognize that and my project is designed to take into account. My project very much takes it into account and uh, the messiness of work is my practice, the messiness of my practice is my research. And you can see again, this, these, it's this messiness of work practice that came through most uh, strongly. The position um, came through as a, some, we, we told them that work practice the fact that it's practice doesn't count as an extra discipline and not, neither does the fact that they're, they're studying it. So where does it fit in terms of this? And the strongest ones in here, or the, they all came through quite strongly, but the strongest ones are the, uh, the cross-disciplinary and the multidisciplinary, transdisciplinary. This is about the, um, the paradigms. Um, 
and what we tried to do in, in, on this is pick up both the epistemology and ontology um, of all of those. And we asked this one twice. We asked it for the research pro for the, the work based project that they were doing and the professional development. And you can see quite interestingly, well, we think it's quite interesting, is that they were able to see that quite separately. They were able to do a positivist uh, work project, but reflect on that in a constructivist or critical or whatever it is way. So it certainly is possible to, to mix those using the structure that we have. This one is about the um, the, the the maturity in which that they um, apply ethics, sustainability, and culpable Maori, um, and they they're mostly in the apply um, area, but there are some worrying ones for us that are a bit lower in there. Something which we're working on. And ambiguity, one of the things that people do struggle with when something is, as we talked about before, so uh, messy. So this is the, uh, asking this at the end of the learning agreement, to what extent are you um, certain or uncertain about the destination of the journey and the path to uh, to get there? And you can see it's quite well spread, but quite a lot in the uncertain uh, spaces. So the this is the uh, I know where I'm going and I know how to get there. This is the I know where I'm, I know the direction I'm traveling, but I'm not sure where I'm going to end up. This one is the the um, uncertain path is I know where I'm going, but I'm not sure how I'm going to get there. We broke that up because it was big, broke that up into two paths, a rickety bridge or no path. Um, and I've, I don't know where I'm going in either direction or the path. Um, people saw that as being unwell prepared. I'm, I'm ready to go and climb the mountain, but I'm not ready to go and climb a mountain, uh, but I'm not quite sure yet which mountain. So I've been focusing on, on that skill of, of the researching rather than the where are people going and the impact that people were making. So it goes across, it goes with the, the scale of the impact and the uh, personal impact, the um, well, the professional articulation impact, the change in practice and the impact, um, measurable impact that that's had. And you can see that there's a big range in here. And interestingly, that they don't have to have the the smaller levels in order to jump up to the uh, to the bigger levels. Um, and people in terms of the where does the evidence come from, people with we're seeing that it could come, uh, there's, a, there's a whole range in here about whether or not it's about doing the work and reflecting it, doing the work, reflecting on it, and then reflecting on it in sort of a meta way. Um, and it, people had every variation on this. <clears throat> we asked about where learning happened um, in, the, in the process. Um, and you can see that there's an awful lot of learning going on at the end of the project and after it realizing after what people are doing. So it really reinforces that notion that the we are really prepare, helping people prepare for the rest of their careers, the rest of their uh, lives, and they see value uh, in that. So what we've got is a feeling of the variability in what people are doing. So knowing that, what we did is we then went back to all of the pictures that we had of the um, of the processes that people were doing. And we look really, really hard for ways of explaining different things. And we, if, if somebody had explained something in a particular way, oh, there's a heart here, let's try and figure out what they're meaning there. What are they doing by a bike? What's, what's going on with that? How are they uh, using that? And then we went through a process of uh, working out how to represent some of these concepts, how to, to get them down to to um, to simple um, to understand uh, ideas. Then what are we going to do with that? Well, we started to we decided that it would make a really useful board game and it would be a really good sort of gift for us to give to all of the incoming students, a board game by which we could play the um, play their research and the notion that if they can play the game, they can understand the, the world rules, they would get um, quite a lot out of it. Uh, it became too cumbersome and we went back to, to paper. And we went through probably about 10 versions of the paper 
versions with doing a lot of trialing with different groups um, and different um, different learners. Eventually, we uh, pressed print and printed a big pile of heavy cardstock ones. It's pretty much as soon as we did that, um, for some reason, a whole pile of other things that we'd missed jumped out of us, and we went and had some extra cards printed. We also had a few misprints corrected at that time. So now what we have is the set of professional practice uh, possibilities. Um, and we have worked with this set of cards with pretty much all of our uh, incoming um, incoming learners in the doctorate. Um, maybe not right at the start. Some have been right at the start, but most of them have been at the start of the learning agreement. One of the challenges of the learning agreement is that they don't know what the possible options are for uh, what the, the questions are. So if we say something like, well, what's your paradigm going to be? It's not a thing that people are aware of, of what the options are uh, for that. So the idea of these cards is that uh, people can work through them um, and pick the one that, that seems, to, seems to appeal. Um, and on the back, um, on the back of the cards, there is some more text about that. Uh, which can hopefully point them to further information as they are thinking about it and writing about it. We left them as hand-drawn sketches on purpose. Um, we could have drawn them up, uh, had, had them drawn up uh, more neatly, but we wanted to make the point that these are not permanent. The, the, these are not absolute. And in some cases, somebody might say, well, it's a bit of this and a bit of that. And we wanted to make it clear that these are things which, as, as we're describing, um, these are in permanent beta, both in terms of the overall development of them, but for the, also for the application for every individual. So if you're looking at these two, you're looking at two cards and say, well, it's a bit of this one, it's a bit of that one, that's probably OK. Um, you know, so, so long as those two things aren't wildly in conflict, then that's a good way of identifying what it is that you are uh, trying. There is a set of introduction cards that has on the back the instructions for, for how to go about using the cards, the sort of things that I was just saying about it doesn't have to be perfect, um, um, and laying out the overall structure, so starting with an overall approach of the, the doctorate, uh, reinforcing that the work-based project is a project for work, but so far as the, the the doctorate is concerned, its primary role is as a vehicle for developing the uh, the learning outcomes or for achieving the learning outcomes for illustrating and informing the articulation of the professional framework of practice. And the relationship between the uh, articulation of the professional framework of practice, the change in practice and the impact that that has on the back of the, on the back of all of the cards there is uh, more uh, information this is a card which we actually developed late and it's it turned out to be really important it is the 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 central pivot um, in the in the approach in the overall research this is the actual doing the research as we said before this is about the the coming together of the 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 research um, the research threads um, and what we explain to people is that the that while they're drawn here just as two cogs in practice many people have cogs where one cog is inside another cog or the the the, the learning outcome cog might be lots of little cogs around the outside of the the main cog or whatever the possible relationship is but people should be able to explain what that um, what that model is. You'll see that there are little letters on the cards. Uh, they match up mostly. There's a couple that we need to fix, but they mostly match up um, so that you can um, arrange the entire set in a bit like a jigsaw puzzle to um, to create a, a, a thing. So the overall process flows out across a table. The black cards are ones which uh, there's only one option for, and they, they need filling in. Um, 
and, and so they are the ones such as this one at the start, which is um, this, the current framework of practice, the uh, I am a um, uh, statement. Then it flows through the context ones, the context in which the, the work is being done. That brings us to the series of black and orange ones. So these are the aspirational frameworks, framework of practice, the aspirational change, how that change is going to be measured. Um, up here, it's about the identification of the, the learning outcome. And then these ones are the areas in which the, uh, the work is being uh, carried out. The yellow ones are the ones that people struggle with a bit. There's the more theoretical ones, the paradigm uh, and positionality, the, um, that context. Then the green ones come in. These are much more the, the method in practice. How do we get from that to the, the actual doing? There's the ethics, sustainability and couple Maori uh, down here. And it comes together with that. OK, so this is what I'm doing and this is how those two things uh, play nicely together. I'm coming out of the top of that, um, that, that the COGS one is the identification of the people who will involve, who will help with the, uh, the learning aspects. And the, the ones here are about the, the, the nature of how are you doing the reflection? How is that reflection uh, being recorded? The dark blue ones are about the the end game, about essentially about the the collection of the end game. The how do you know when you're finished? The nature of the narrative, how that's pulling together, where and when are you doing the writing? The nature of the writing. Then that all comes together with the identification of the scale of the impact. And then there is a card each for the professional framework of practice, the change of practice and the impact. Um, and these are scaled. So what you're doing there is picking out the relative importance of each of those to the claim of of doctorateness and you're actually saying well what is it that I'm aiming for that all pulls together in terms of the new professional framework of practice and all comes together finally as the so what is the argument that you're making what is that practitioner thesis what is that defensible argument now we stress that those things will change as you go along because uh, that's kind of the point um, but it is still useful to identify now what that is and then work backwards from that. We've had some discussion about whether or not it will be worthwhile starting uh, right on, on, on the end. And in fact, for some people, it's useful to show that very last card and to, to put that on the far end of the table to show that is where we are, uh, that is where we are going. So here is just some, um, here it is in practice. And again, it's downloadable uh, from um, www.op.ac.n slash possibilities um, in a couple of different formats, or you can send us some money, um, talk to us about that, and we can send you one of the nicely printed version on cardstock. Um, and here it is being used in different, um, different occasions. Our learners are in their, their workplaces. Most of our, um, our teaching, if you will, is done either remotely or in coffee shops. Um, and so we've spread the cards out over a lot of coffee shops around the, around the country. And you can see that people take pictures of them to remember what they are. We, we stack them up as we're doing them with the options underneath. If they've picked more than one, then we, we stack them up with the, the different options or the different choices showing so that we can remember those and they can take that away and play with it and mull it over. So. Thank you very much for listening. I'm Samuel Mann, um, and please do get in touch if you 
want to use them, you can just download them and use them, but we're really, really keen to hear your experiences of using them. If they work in your context, we're more than happy to uh, to talk about that. If they don't work and you want to think about how we could use them in other ways, we're really happy to do that um, as well. We would like to collaborate and with you on, on this. That's it. Thank you very much for listening.